Hello, I'm Jeff Golden. Thank you so much for joining us today. I'm joined by my special friend here, Dr. Steve Wengel, and I uh, want to welcome everybody back to campus, uh, extend our, our most sincere gratitude to our incoming students for the experiences that you're about to embark upon. I, of course, want to thank our returning students and wish them the very best on their continued journey our faculty and staff who make sure that our, our educational mission, our research mission, and our clinical mission are absolutely at the top of our game. And, and all of that is just functioning magnificently well. But today, uh, for just the next few minutes, I want to talk about the stress. I want to talk about the challenge. Because I know as I walk across our campuses, when I talk to our new students, I get to meet their family members, some of it is due to this fourth and incredibly frightening spike of the pandemic. Some of it's due to the academic environment, the economic changes. Some of it's due to illness and, and personal family loss. And Steve, so, you know, we talked about this a lot and uh, we've done so many of these videos together, but I sense that this day and this time is different and that we really need to focus on the conversation, removing the stigma, and then making people feel energized and aware that there are resources available for them. I would completely agree that uh, these are turbulent times. These are really turbulent times for all the reasons you've said and more. Um, we are, however, a resilient uh, group of students, faculty, and staff, and we have overcome many, many challenges before, and uh, we will overcome this too, but I think it is good to have this conversation. So, you know, uh, I'm wondering if there are a couple of rules of the road. Uh, and one of the rules of the road that I've used uh, recently, which I think you recommended uh, to me, several of them actually, was uh, work from a schedule. In other words, plan your day, but plan time that you're disconnected. So, for instance, you know, I, I'm holding my phone for a reason. It's to remind me to say to you that you don't need to be electronically connected 24 hours a day. Yes. You know, it's not that I don't uh, feel the need to answer my emails and my texts, mm -hmm. particularly from family and friends, mm -hmm. but not 24 hours a day. Here, here. Yes. I think uh, electronic media, I mean, it's amazing. The communication. Well, let's just put this over here for yeah, the there moment. You go. Well, that's more than symbolic, right? right. Yeah. I just let it go. That's right. Let it go. That's, uh, that's it. Sometimes it's pretty simple stuff, right? Let it go. Uh, I think the same applies to social media and other uh, forms of media. I mean, there are so many things happening in the world now that we want to keep up. But I think sometimes we overindulge, and uh, that can make us feel more anxious and on edge. So I, I encourage people to, you know, sort of titrate mm -hmm. their media consumption. Think of it like a medication, you know, you want, it, you want the right dose, not too much, not too little. Yeah, and sometimes maybe even none for a period Correct. of time. Yeah, I think it's uh, right. I think a, a bit of a fast, if you will, you know, a media fast mm -hmm. uh, or a digital fast is not the worst thing in the world. And I recall from our earlier conversations, taking care of yourself, you know, watching your diet, getting some exercise, getting a reasonable amount of sleep, uh, all of those things are important, right? Right, and sometimes we have to remind ourselves, even those of us in healthcare uh, have to remind ourselves because we get really busy and we tend to give. We give to our students, we give to our patients. You know, we're sort of in the giving business. We're in the helping professions after all. And sometimes we forget to give back to ourselves. You have to make a conscious effort. So all the things you say, and one of the things I really tell people is, you know, maybe start with sleep because many of us are uh, a bit sleep deprived, and uh, that I've heard about that. Yeah, I, th I think you may have heard that once or twice, right? Yeah. And uh, you know, sometimes we stay up, and I've been guilty of that too. Sometimes you stay up a little later than you really should, uh, you know, watching your media of choice, and that works against you in a couple different ways. And I'm trying to titrate that myself, which I find really helpful for managing my stress, cutting back, getting an extra half hour of sleep. Sometimes I have found that to be really powerful as well. And then finally, I want to take a few minutes before we talk about resources, is just the conversation, the ability to destigmatize the conversation, to be the ability to openly walk up to somebody, a friend, a colleague, a co-worker, etc., and say, you know, how you doing today? Right. Uh, is there anything you really like to talk about? Uh, and you know, I am, even people who I work with but are, I would not consider close friends, mm -hmm. just to say thank you to them, for what they're doing and ask them how they're feeling, how their family is, 
Uh, you'd be surprised how much that can uplift others, don't you think? I think that social connection is really uh, one of the best antidotes to the stress that we're going through. Um, obviously, we have to be careful and we have to, you know, follow the rules and the ever-changing rules, I would say, you know, but we are, but staying connected socially. And you're right, just even those simple couple of minutes or not even a minute long interaction sometimes can be really healing, I think. And I've seen, one, one of the things I've been really impressed by uh, on both the UNMC campus and of course at Nebraska Medicine is uh, our leaders being very, um, uh, you know, really good about starting meetings, talking about this, and just as you did a few minutes ago, exposing the fact that we are all human beings. We all experience stress, whether you're chancellor, physician, student, sure. uh, administrative uh, person, it doesn't matter. And I think talking Talking about that really helps. Well, let's talk about resources yeah. because uh, it is the counseling resources, the the assistant resources that we have through HR, through our professional programs, etc. What are the best places for students, particularly let's say our new students or our new faculty who have recently onboarded, who may not know our resources quite so well, which are extensive. This actually brings us full circle back to technology. So here's a place where technology is your friend. So if you have a smartphone. So I should pick up the phone? There you go. Okay. Per perfect time. So uh, I bet everybody listening. That was a very short holiday with the phone, yeah, by the way. That was short fast, but uh, you know, still counts, I guess. But get the UNMC app on your phone. If you don't have the UNMC app, please. I'm just just get the UNMC app it's obviously free yep. if you'll notice on the lower left hand second from the bottom there's a little green button called counseling and push push the button and it will give you the counseling resources incidentally that same counseling page will take you to a really great resource that I think we don't use often enough you can take an, an anonymous completely confidential mental health screening test a sort of a self-test yeah takes five minutes I've done it myself period as have I yeah You'll get immediate feedback. I think it's a great thing. Uh, but that's, it uh, will link you to student counseling, though. If you're a student and you want to check out student counseling, please do. We have counselors standing by, really talented. 24-7. Uh, yep. yep. Literally. Uh, we have great resources for employees, for faculty and staff through our employee assistance program, also on the app. So uh, it's free. It is free, a free resource for you and your family members, incidentally. Uh, EAP, employee assistance, is not just for the employee, but family as well. Super. Well, all good advice. Listen, I want to thank you for joining me today, but more importantly, I want to thank you for everything that you have done and continue to do for campus wellness. I really appreciate you. And thank you for being with us on this very special segment today.